Jeez, trying to curb the rambling man sometimes is just impossible. <laughs> what have you said now, Chris? Um, all right. Um, what have the best clues solve? What were the best clues to solve the Ascii Hesitus puzzles that were in Tiles 1? It'd be great if they gave much clearer hint or have some guidance from terminals what the hexadecimal code is which could lead led the layman's mind to solve things after the layman yeah like i say if if they're putting something like that in and it's not it's part of the main game and not part of an easter egg then i feel like they sh they should be they should have explained it in some way shape or form at some point in the game because i do i i totally see what where you're coming from and what you're saying there um you, if, to not have any like knowledge of the subject and then it's part of the what you need to actually solve the puzzle is uh, a little bit harsh so um to be honest though i, I i'd be interested to go back myself and actually take a look at what the puzzle was and whether or not there were any clues and, and bits and pieces around it. As I say, my memory's not great on the puzzle, so I can't remember off the top of my head um, exactly what it was it, you had to do and what the result of the puzzle was either. So, yeah, I'd be, I'd be interested. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much in the same boat. Yeah. It's been so long since I played it, and then I I did leave it, and I came back to finish it a long time later, but I still I have certain memories of certain puzzles, but yeah, there's a lot that I, I've just forgotten. Uh, just like Portal, I mean, I could get back and play every puzzle I've ever played. And I would have to think about it again. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, I, I like even even my own puzzles that I made. It's like, okay, what what the hell was I thinking here? How do I do this? Unless it was one of my actual more logical type puzzles, as opposed to many of the ones that use kind of like gimmicks. Uh, yeah. 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 But, I mean, if that's the case, like that is in that is in the game, so to speak. I feel like that's really bad puzzle design on their part. They've not included anything for um, somebody who doesn't know anything about the subject, and then they're expecting them to know it to solve a puzzle. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's bad puzzle design, to be fair. You thought they were corrupted data, you didn't even know they could be translated. Some playthroughs that you watched initially thought that those were hexadecimal codes. Yeah, so, um, I think, was it, didn't Infra have something very similar to that? I'm sure Infra had parts where some of the messages and some of the stuff in the game was hexadecimal and you could translate it to reveal secret messages. But that was different because, in my opinion, it wasn't part of the actual game. It was like an optional thing that you could do if you really wanted to deep dive into some of like the lore behind the game. But it definitely wasn't required to solve or finish any of the puzzle or any part of the game. And that's the way I think that sort of kind of thing should be. If I'm honest, but again, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you, 100%. Yeah, I think most people would. Yeah, if you got a game, especially if it's not like something very, I don't know, uh, targeted towards a certain, you know, certain types of players, then. They should give you what you need in the game to solve or do what you need to do, what they're asking you to do. So, yeah. You know, I, I don't. If you're expecting, to, if you if you want to use mechanics like that, then you have to 
explain them to the player some in some way, shape, or form so that they can solve it themselves without having to look up some sort of weird guide to be able to solve a puzzle. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, and even if even if it's like a side side puzzle, side quest, whatever you want to call it, I think it still should be. I don't think it should be like I said, like some of the some of these games I've played uh, they weren't as big as like Talos and Witness and Gordon and all those. They had stuff that you literally just you had to know. Yeah. And it's like, okay, uh, I, I can kind of get that on like, you know, it's, let's say it's an English based game or whatever. And, you know, there's plenty that, you know, you have to know, like, say, Roman numerals. You have to, or you have to know how chess works. You know, how the, how the pieces move in order to solve them. Yeah. And and the ones that do that, even if you don't like say the chess stuff, which typically you know what I'm talking about, it'll typically be the knight. Yeah. And, and you have to like hit every spot on the board. But well, we I think we you think quite like the the knight's driving test or something. Where but, uh, well probably not, but I'm I'm sort of thinking where. There was a little thing, I don't know if it's like common practice, it used to be called the knight's driving test. You'd start with your, you literally had a knight and then you'd have so many pawns of the opposite color laid out on the chessboard and you you had like so many moves and you had to make sure you took every pawn of the opponent. Oh yeah. yeah. In set, set number of moves. But I, yeah, there's, that sort of thing is kind of common practice. I know what you're saying, like where, you know, you got your chess piece and you have to move and you have to cover each um segment of the board yeah so it's yeah same thing it, it, yeah but you have to you have to know chess but the ones that uh, at least most of them i think it, it, it like it'll like if you click on the piece it'll highlight where it can go and you know the l shape pattern yeah Where are you going? Uh, have we tried the Wendy's nacho? Oh, I was just saying. That one's good. Yeah, I uh, uh, I mean, I'm good. Unless you see something you think I might like. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Facing off out some food. Yeah. I don't. I, he's going to Burger King. I don't understand that. Ugh. I'm not a huge Burger Burger King fan. I'm not really a. I'm not really a fast food guy. Fast food fan. To be fair. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I rarely get fast feet. Very rare. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's actually gotten so expensive here. Uh, I mean, I don't know how it is there. Was, from some of the videos I've seen, it's crazy expensive there. Yeah, McDonald's. The price of McDonald's is yeah, shocking. Like, say, ten years, fifteen years ago, you could get a combo for a typical combo with like a you know burger, a large, bur you know, burger, large fry, large drink. And back then, they had super size. We don't have that anymore. Everything is yeah, now. We we don't have super size anymore. I don't think. Yeah, everything has gotten smaller and smaller. Price is going up, and quality has gone down. Yeah, say so like now, if you go to like you see, like I said, 
you could go for five or six bucks or even like five years ago you could, you could go to uh, Wendy's or McDonald's or whatever and you get like a quarter pounder or you know whatever combo and you might pay six or seven dollars yeah. So, and, and that was with like a medium drink, medium fry, burger, or chicken sandwich, or whatever. Yeah. Not, not now. I mean, just just the burgers or sandwich or you know chicken sandwiches or whatever by themselves are eight to nine dollars. if you get a combo, you know you're looking at anywhere from twelve to fifteen dollars. Uh, which is ridiculous because I, I I can literally go to my grocery store, buy a pound of meat, some buns, and uh, fresh onion, uh, lettuce, tomato, and all that, and I might spend twenty five bucks, but. I can make that same combo over and over again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With that, to, to make it come out to like $3 or so. Yeah, it's just gotten so ridiculous. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it, it's like it's, it's the amount we used to pay going to a restaurant. And of course now, just the, the lower priced restaurants are, you know, if you get you know anything it's any kind of like if you get any kind of steak or whatever i mean you get a meal it's it's gonna run you 20 20 plus of course as you know <clears throat> the tipping culture over here because they only pay, they only pay like uh, two dollars and something an hour for uh, waiters and waitresses so they rely on tips uh, and the and one thing that a lot of people don't know even here is that yeah the you're allowed to uh, the, the restaurants are allowed to pay them literally uh, about a, a third a quarter less than what minimum minimum wage is and they have to rely on tips mm. to, to to make the money and then and, and unless you're working at a a nicer place you're not going to get that money and it depends on how many tables you get and all that kind of stuff yeah but yeah it's it's absolutely ridiculous let's see if and, and if they try their hardest or whatever and just aren't good at it and don't make enough in tips to to at least equal minimum wage then the restaurant has to pay them they they have to cut them the difference to bring it up to minimum wage yeah even with tip, even with tips so yeah, but it, the thing is, if you if you work at a place like that and you don't get enough tips to bring your pay past, um, you know, minimum wage, then they're gonna fire you. Yeah, yeah. Because because they they, they don't, don't want to pay you. Yeah, they don't want to yeah. pay and, and top it up. So, uh, yeah. I've got some story, dude. Okay, my bad. All right. All right. <laughs> Is it just me, or are all the rooms starting to look the same? Maybe we're just going in circles. Some help she was. I think you might have ruffled her feathers, Donald. I think, what are you going to do? You weren't supposed to bring the pirates with you. Stay back, pirates, or well, this will be the last fight you pick. What's the big idea? We're not pirates. We're only here because... Uh, why are we here, Sora? Huh? 
am I supposed to know, Donald? Goofy, what do you think? Gosh, beats me. Okay, okay, I understand. Sora, Donald, and Goofy, right? I guess if you were real pirates, you wouldn't get lost on your own ship. Plus, you're dressed funny. There you go again. Wait, so if you thought we were pirates, this must be a pirate ship. That's right, you're trapped inside the Jolly Roger. Ship of the old codfish, Captain Hook. Well, if we're trapped, that means you are too. Me? Don't be silly. No one can capture Peter Pan. I'm just laying low until it's my time to time to spring my plan. What plan is that? Pirates kidnapped my friend Wendy. You got to be somewhere on this ship. I didn't expect there to be so many pirates on watch though. I sent Tink to look for a way around. But all she found was you. I bet I knew what I bet I knew what Tink had in mind. If we all make a big enough racket, we can distract the pirates. Bosh, you must have read her mind. So how about it? Let's work together, at least until we get above deck. Well, why not? Of course, I could save Wendy myself if I wanted to, but you guys look look like you'd be stuck without me. I'm not really sure, Peter, to be fair. I think we'd be fine without you. Don't you have any manners? That's not a bad thing, though, Papirius. I mean, the fact that you can cook your own meals and you don't need to ha uh, like you don't need to be eating fast food, I think, is is something quite impressive, if I'm honest. Ah, uh, man, like I, like I said in Discord, Papirius, man, uh, I would eat every single pasta dish that you made because I'm a Huge pasta fan, and but between that Mexican food, cheese, yeah, I'm, I'm all in. Uh, you couldn't go wrong unless you did something really, really strange. <laughs> uh, Crazy's got a question for me and you. Would you fancy doing some play testing in the future? Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. I mean, what are we? Are we talking uh, portal? Just, just portal or something else crazy? I would assume portal. Yeah, portal. Hey, send me, uh, send me a link in chat. Oh, something, something else. Something else. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Send me a link or whatever you got in chat. Yeah. Uh, the, send it to me in. Send it to me in Discord and Steam because I'm. Kinda, things are changing for me, so I'm not sure where I'll get them first. So if, if you at if you at me like whether in Knox Discord or mine or whatever, that's fine. I, I'll I'll see it on Discord. Uh, I used to have I mean, Steam I've been 24-7 and now I don't until I go to actually play a particular game. I mean, it's, um, if you can't talk about it too much then it's completely fine crazy, but I mean, what sort of thing are we... What sort of game are we, are we talking about? Something that you're like you're working on with somebody else or...? Okay. They so soon level three design at college and doing year two of the course. This year you're going to be making a game, totally new one from scratch, and we're doing it as a group project. Turn-based turn -based combat game. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I like. I've, I've played some turn-based games for sure. Uh, risk, risk being an old school one, but I've played quite a few turn-based. Uh, I've done some of the card games. Uh, even though that's typically not my thing, but uh, I've gotten to where I kind of, you know, I, 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 I kind of enjoy that a little bit. Uh, depends on different factors for me, but 
But yeah, yeah, I'll totally be down for it. No, I don't ever think I've played Risk. Sorry to cut interrupt there. But yeah, I don't think I've ever played Risk. Ah, great game. Great board game. Of course, you can obviously now play it on your phone or computer or whatever. But, and there's like so many variations of it now. Basically, they're just uh, just copy pastas. Yeah. You know, and they call it something else. But it's still based on the same concept. You know, as we used to play it on an actual, you know, as a board game. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's, it's a fun, it's a fun game. It's it's strategy. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm always quite intrigued by like strategy games, but then I, I I start playing them and realize actually I'm pretty shit at strategy games. So. <laughs> oh, I never uh, kind of. I'm surprised with that. Them. Yeah. I think I thought you would be, you know, pretty good at strategy games. Maybe you're yeah, underselling yourself because well, I, possibly. I don't think I'm that good, but I do pretty well. You know, with the ones I played. So I think I think you're underselling yourself, under underestimating yourself, maybe. Okay, see, I haven't actually started making the game yet, so little, maybe a little early to ask about playtesting, but yeah. yeah. As soon as you get to the point where you have a playable game, sure. Send it over and uh, we'll definitely shall do what, what he does best and try and break it. <laughs> uh, oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I don't know what it is about strategy games. I don't know. It's like, although I apply a lot of the same tactics for like solving puzzle games and stuff, I think I sometimes find it hard to visualize too far in ahead and, and plan like for so many steps ahead. So it's maybe why I feel like I struggle with strategy games. Yeah, I kind of, I don't know. Me, I just kind of, I kind of go, you know, logically, and I kind of go with my gut on certain moves that I'll go for, like, you know, like I'm, like, risk. If I'm, if I'm going for, to try to take over a certain area, uh, I'll, I'll weigh the risk reward. Yeah. You know, you know, benefit, downside, the... And kind of, kind of, I tend to get, uh, I'll take chance. And sometimes it pays off, sometimes it ruins me, but uh, sometimes I'll take the chances because, like, risk is, is, is about the roll of dice. Yeah. And as, as opposed to so, some of the other games that are, that have been based on, you know, risk. Which has been a lot. There's a crap ton on Android platform, uh, you know, Google Play. Uh, they they tend to leave out the dice roll and just have you have numbers, and some of them are actually real time. So you have to, you don't have time to think. You don't get cards. You don't roll dice. You just get like a. Like you, you're the, you're this spot, this spot, this spot. Yeah. And then, and then the, your, your army is building up at a certain rate. And then, and it tells you the number of troops you have. And then, of course, you don't want to send, send them to a territory uh, that's, that's an enemy territory that they already have, but you have more troops than they do. So, yeah, it's just a balance of things. So it's different. It's different than risk on some of these newer ones, just because you don't have chance 
too much as yep. the first one to do it or take over certain areas, luck of the draw on where you start and where you can move and all that kind of stuff, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would say send them, send them to Discord. Uh, I'm sure, not could, or you could, either one, uh, make a a crazy game chat, yeah, thing. and that way you could just post it there and and you know and, and do at so that we would. Anything you post in there would uh, we'd, we'd both get informed. So, so yeah, I, I mean, for me, I would say just post a knock as a uh, well, you're the Discord guy. Knock, so. I'm, I'm the Discord guy, although I hardly ever go on Discord these days. <laughs> yeah, well, you're still. Far, far ahead of me on how Discord works. I can use it, but I can't make it. <laughs> yeah, make a chat. There we go. Yeah. That's that's what I was meaning. <laughs> that's kind of how the podcast thing started with uh, City Cat. He created a chat with uh, him and this, this not guy and whoever yeah, I am. What's, what's the deal with that not guy? I mean, who is he? I don't know. I don't even know who I am anymore. Sounds like a bit of a loser. Uh, da, da, da. I, I look up to that not guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, from what I understand, he's he's actually uh, from India and is a scammer. And he, he uses AI to play British, British looking boy on the camera. <laughs> you love to play that one narrator game that was turn based battle RPG, but your only complaint against the game was that you like developed the characters too slowly. I want to develop characters faster. It would require hundreds of dollars even. Yeah, was it a mobile? Was it a mobile game, Furious? Because what you find, like a lot of those kind of mobile games, yeah. Sorry, yeah, I missed, I missed the last sentence there. Um, mobile, mobile games. Yeah, that's they're, they're only literally kind of, they, they just give you enough to kind of hook you. But then to actually get anywhere substantial, you need to spend a ridiculous amount of money. Or or just waste your time watching ads, yeah. or or just get lucky. Uh, uh, one style of game that hits that directly on the nose is all the match three puzzles. The what puzzles? The match three. Oh, yeah, yeah, like the candy crushes and that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, like the other five billion of them. And, yeah, it's easy at first, and then they give you, they give you free, uh, free, like, whatever you call it. Lives. Uh, well, lives, but they give you free, uh, up, up, like, crap. What do you call it? Like, they'll give you, you know, like a bomb and uh, this or that, and they give you oh, free yeah, ones yeah. as they as they introduce them, and then power ups. And, and, yeah, power ups. Thank you. And then, and then you have three of them after the free one, and then once you use them, yeah, then you, you go through all that, and then you're like, okay, this is. Yeah, this is kind of cool, just for something to pass some time. I mean, I've never been a huge fan of them, but they, they've added more to them. And then it gets to a point, though, where you have to be incredibly lucky 
to get through it without using any power-ups and spending any real money. Or you have to watch a crap with ads, which, uh, guess what I'm not doing. Uh, guess what I do? Take a, take a wild stab at it, not. Um, would you delete it? Oh, no, you are incorrect. I uninstall it. Okay. <laughs> and the difference between deleting and uninstalling is? Well, I was being technical, I guess. There was, um, there was a Final Fantasy one that came out um, a few weeks ago. It was, it was sort of like exactly the same thing. It, but oh, we're going to draw you in with like, we're going to have the stories from the original games and we're going to um, give you this and the other. But deep down, it was just kind of like one of those typical mobile games where to get anywhere, you're going to have to spend a ridiculous amount of money or just sit there doing nothing else all day but play their game. So I won't worry about it too much at the minute. Crazy. Um, obviously keep it in mind and then as and when you've got kind of stuff that um, you potentially want us to have a look at then we'll probably set one up then yeah well, once you get a, a playable a playable version yeah ah uh, poor fears jeez uh, yeah where you have to spend hundreds without oh my god there's what blows my mind is they do it because it works, but it's only a very, very small percentage of people that spend, you know, like 50, 100 bucks on coins or gems or whatever so that they can progress at a reasonable rate. And there's no way, I mean, you wouldn't, st I mean, nobody. Most people don't spend that on a triple A game, much less a mobile game. Yeah. But I mean, I remember this guy like a long time ago when I was on Facebook, there was a game called Pirates and me and JJ used to play it and we went up through the ranks and we, you know, it, it constantly kept getting uh upgrades and all that kind of stuff and then all of a sudden you know we're like on level once you pass level 100 then you're the open sea so to speak so any anybody above level 100 can attack you so right. so yeah so we uh we ended up getting uh he he got lucky on some some things where there's some glitches and he jumped up like a couple hundred levels even you know, like no time and i'm like ah oh, you lucky bastard but we're on different servers even yeah. though we're on the same game so i didn't have that uh glitch but there was a guy that went from like we got to where we were in 300 400 level range and then all of a sudden this one dude went from ran at our level to like uh 10,000 you know whatever it was it was in a thousand I don't remember I don't remember but yeah he admitted that he he literally spent ten thousand dollars in the game to to level up like that and I'm like are you kidding me that's uh, ridiculous i mean even if i was a millionaire I, you know a billionaire it doesn't matter i would not spend that money but that's how they made their money and then after all that happened and people people spent thousands on this game which was like i, I think when i looked into it it was between one to three percent of players were the ones that made the game profitable profitable for them yeah and you know the rest didn't spend money like us we didn't spend any money 
and you know, we just played it and did our thing and it was like that's absolute nuts and then I would say after he did that and then some other people spent some decent chunks you started to see like the levels and you looked at the, the leaderboards go you know, ridiculously high really quick you knew that you knew they were paying their way up yeah. and you know it was a handful of people pretty much and uh they ended up killing the game and that was it they they yeah. They took a debt. Now they had to spend all that money on this game, and it no longer exists. It's like yeah, it's oh. it's, it's it's crazy that um, you know then the developers have the power just to do that after people have invested so much, not necessarily just money, but also time into a game. Um, oh yeah. Well, let, I'll, I'll pick this up again in a minute, but um, yep. Yep. Go ahead. another segment here. Yep. There she is. Peter? Peter Pan? Wendy, are you all right? I've come to rescue you with my three new lost boys. Come on, let's get off this leaky old tub and get some, do some exploring. Ha ha, we'll never grow up. Listen, Peter, I've got something to tell you. I want to go home to London. What are you talking about? Why would you want to do that? You'd have to turn into a grown-up. Besides, going on adventures is a lot more fun. If you go back to London, you'll have to leave the nursery. You'll grow up, and we'll never see each other again. I know, Peter, but I still want to go home. I came to rescue you, and you don't care if you ever see me again? You don't understand. Suit yourself, and while you're at it, rescue yourself. I'm leaving. Man, Peter's a jerk. Hey, wait a minute. There he goes. Peter. Not very thoughtful, is he? What do we do now? Hey, I've got an idea. Why don't we think of something once we get up on deck? That doesn't make any sense, I think. Well, there's still trouble waiting outside. Wendy, you stay here. We'll try and create a distraction. All right, be careful. Maybe if you stay here, Peter will change his mind and come back. That Peter's a jerk. Yeah, so yeah, that's the um, just to sort of like carry on that conversation. It's um, it's the worrying thing I I think personally with um the way. But the, the digital age of games that we're sort of living in as well. So like, well, I guess Steam is the same, but you can spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on your Steam library buying all, all the games that you want, but a single infringement of like their account policy or something, which may or may not be your fault entirely. Um, and you basically lose that entire investment of potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's why I'm always a bit more of a fan of, although it's a dying form, physical media, because if I have something um, physically in my possession, they can't take that away. Yeah. 100%. Your account gets, your account gets banned. You lose everything like i'm i'm at 19 years on steam yeah. and i have a, a lot of games and if my account got banned i mean holy crap yes it's not even worth thinking about really to be fair is it I, I mean like, that, would, that would just destroy me yeah it, it, it's like okay you want to ban me that's fine but shouldn't be able to you know, remove I shouldn't lose all the games I bought digital, I digital or not it's just 
that blows my mind and it's happened to people. And I had an not... incident with um, Sony, like my original PlayStation 3 um, died a horrible death. Um, and I sold it on eBay for spares and repairs. And I think what must have happened was whoever bought it got it working again. Um, it was still signed into my account. So they started buying loads of stuff on my account, basically. Oh, so um, my my bank picked it up and they, they stopped the transactions uh, from okay. going through. Um, but Sony put a, a ban and a block on my account. So I spoke to Sony and they said to me, the only way I can get uh, my account back was to basically buy the games that these people had um, fraudulently bought on my account. Um, it was either that or I lose my account. So basically I lost like probably two to three hundred pounds worth of content Jeez. because of that that incident. And that's why I've never really been a fan of kind of like digital first. I will always try and get physical media if I can. Yeah, that's why I tend to, you know, I, I consider myself an honest person, but, and I, you know, like, as far as, I'll tell you what I think, uh, sometimes I change my mind later, maybe I say things that I didn't mean or something like that at the time, depending on yeah. me, but, uh, if, you know, that happened, Oh, jeez. Um, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I can, you know, contain myself from going after something. But I mean, I mean, you're, well, you're, you're just at the... You're at the mercy of them at the end of the day. And that's yeah. why, um, when, um... When we got Evan his PlayStation 5, I was, because obviously there's, there's the two options, you can buy the digital only, or you can buy one with um, a disk drive and so for physical media, and I said, I said to him, I, I'd rather you get, we get you the one with the disk drive and pay that extra 80 quid, because then you have that freedom of, yeah. you know, even if, if something happens to your account down the line and you can no longer get on the PlayStation network, you can still play your games. Yeah, see, like, like on Steam, even though you can go offline and play, you know, games that don't require uh, internet connection. I mean, there's so many that require it, uh, yeah. even though I, I have them on uh, multiple hard drives, I can't play them anymore. And I can never play them again if that happened. It's like that's just not fair. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like you, you, you don't you buy a game, but you don't really own it like you used to. You know, like like you're saying. Yeah. Uh, uh, like the last, I feel like the last game I bought physically was yeah. literally the Orange Box. Yeah. And. And once I got the orange box, that's, you know, I had Steam, and ever since then, I, nah, I think I, I bought a few after that. It was, it, it was still a while, but Steam grew more into, you know, uh, the, the platform they are today pretty quickly, which is selling other people's uh, you know, games. Yeah. Which they get a cut of as opposed to originally. It was literally just to just to run their games and that sort of thing. So yeah, I I, I, I don't like that part of it. Uh, I wish there was a way that. But it's just it's just the, the the way like the digital age is. It's gone from kind of like. When you spend your money now, it's gone from like actually owning a product to like it's 
you're just effectively leasing a product. Yeah, exactly. And you don't actually have any rights to like hold that, um, that, that thing. You're just literally paying for the rights to pay for it without actually owning it. And I think that's quite a scary thing when you're potentially spending you know, all that money on these games that you want to play to know that it can be taken away from you at any point because somebody decides that that's what they want to do is just crazy. Yeah, it's, it is. It's, it's, it's insane, and I mean... Like, uh, as a person who's in multiple uh, there's nothing on the scale of Steam, obviously, but at, it, it blows my mind that they wouldn't at least go, okay, hey, guy, girl, uh, we're gonna, because you did this or that, uh, you we're abandoning your account. Yeah. You know, but then it, so it's, it's even more frustrating though, because like there's there's plenty of instances where, you know, you genuinely are not the person who's caused the infringement or done something wrong on your account. But yeah, yeah. I'm saying there's, there's no you know, they ban ban your account, but if they were decent, it, it wouldn't hurt them a bit. There's no like leniency the like there and, or to, yeah. to look into it. I mean, at the end of the day, I, I get all right, I, I get the fact that somebody used my account, somebody bought some games. That's fine, but come to you. I've said this has happened, and at the end of the day, don't what, what I couldn't understand at the time was why they couldn't just turn around to me and say, okay, that's fine, we'll just remove those games from your account and carry on yeah. as you are normally. I don't want the games. I, I never wanted them. So right. Why is yeah, it okay so like you can't just take them, for free. take them away from my account? It was because it was literally identified within sort of like, you know, 15 minutes to half an hour that there was fraudulent activity. My bank called me up like 15, like 15 minutes, half an hour after the transaction had been made. They were instantly stopped. So from half an hour, like, within the half an hour period, you're not really going to have time to have played the game and done much in the game anyway well, so no. i just it just baffles me it baffled me at the time why sony just couldn't have said okay that's fine we'll remove those from your account and job done instead they're just like oh no yeah it's been bought on your account so either you have to have it or your account just gets suspended forever it's just ridiculous but they and they still stand by that same policy now it's crazy that yeah, that's just absurd, ridiculous. Every other synonym you want to want to call it. Oh my God, the dude, the marshmallow head. That reminds me of giant citizen computer <laughs> with the smart uh, the smarties. That's crazy, Perfurious, to say that like even degrees are going to be digital device. It's like one of one of like your like crowning moments when you get a degree is like getting it in paper form and like putting it on your wall much like i've got mine on like my wall behind me so that's, hey, um, it. yeah that's, that's crazy to think that they're going to digitalize no, 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 the actual final degrees digitize it you gotta print it out yourself and and <laughs> crazy yeah it's fine we we kind of said before that it's absolutely fine so yeah it's um not a problem all right um let me let me get ready because I'm pretty sure through this door that rhymed and I didn't mean it to rhyme. Uh, we're gonna have a boss fight, so that makes me think like, okay, you, you just went through college, uh, aka university, uh, which we we use over here both terms. They basically mean the same thing, but I know y'all go by uni university uh that sort of thing but yeah so you graduate you get your doctorate or whatever and it's digital and then they go uh somebody somebody like got into your school account and they go well sorry uh 
We're taking away your diploma. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. Especially over here, because over here, even at a cheap school, you're spending, you know, sixty thousand dollars a year, forty yeah. thousand, whatever, you know. It's freaking ridiculous. So <laughs> Oh yeah, no, the the real diplomas should be uh on the paper they use, embossed, signed and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. One hundred percent. Yeah, there's there's just some things that do not need to be digital. Alright. Uh, I mean if they if they add a digital copy that's fine but you should still get a legit put your hands on it kind of thing yeah definitely yeah all right i'm gonna go through the door and i think we're probably gonna have story and boss fight so right let's uh do it to it get it on, man. man 